Rocky Jones. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. In The Silver Needle in the Sky, Chapter 1. Marshal, we'd better have a final charting conference with Rocky Jones before making any more calculations on this flight. Ask Rocky to come in. Yes, Mr. Secretary. May I speak with you, Secretary Drake? It's very important. Of course, Dina. Always glad to see you. What's on your mind? Uh, see if you can find Rocky, will you, Marshal? Yes, sir. Now, Dina, go ahead. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do about it? About what, sir? Oh, then you know why I came. I've been expecting you. It's about Rocky's flight, isn't it? Please, Mr. Secretary, assign me as navigator. Do you know exactly what Rocky's mission is? Yes, sir. Carrying the space ambassadors to the Interplanet Peace Conference. Dina... This mission involves the greatest responsibility. I realize that, sir. The passengers are the top diplomats and scientists in our solar system. For this reason, Dina, I want Rocky to select his own navigator. But I'm an interpreter, too. Oh, they don't need an interpreter, Dina. Our own space ambassador, Dr. Tyson, speaks all languages fluently. Oh. And since the conference is taking place in neutral territory, the universal language will be spoken. Sent for me, sir? Well, <laughs> I called for Rocky Jones and three men arrived. <laughs> but I'm glad you're all here. I want to discuss the final charting of the conference flight. Will you step this way, please? The conference is to take place on the space station. It is the X07 in the orbit of Paratane, a planetoid in the Jupiter equilateral. A neutral area? Uh -huh. Purposely chosen for security reasons. Well, will the outlaw planets respect this neutrality? I sincerely hope so, Winky, since ambassadors are arriving from every part of the universe. When do we blast off, sir? At dawn tomorrow. You'll need a navigator for this trip, won't you, sir? I've already selected my crew. Don't forget to pack your lipstick, ma'am. Don't worry, I will. That's more important to me than oxygen. Never go any place without women, especially out of this world. <laughs> Rocky, these are the most important passengers you've ever had. Their safety depends entirely on you. I understand, sir. And now I'd like you to meet them and give them a final briefing. Hey, what about me? Well, gentlemen, that's about all. Blast off time will be at dawn. I hope we have smooth sailing. Are there any questions, Dr. Tyson? None, thank you. I want you to know we consider it a privilege to have Rocky Jones pilot us to the Interplanet Conference. Well, thank you, sir. Now may I suggest some sleep for our distinguished passengers? Hey, haven't you forgotten something? Forgotten something? Well, let me see. Charting instructions? Passenger list, co-pilot, navigator. No, I don't think so. Galloping galaxies. If I'm to be your junior lieutenant, I can't be left behind. Oh, yes, the uh, junior lieutenant. You see, Dr. Tyson, sir, I'm an expert at keeping the ship's log. Well, now, it seems to me that keeping the ship's log is a matter of extreme importance. And you'll be too busy, Rocky. Bobby, report to the orbit jet as keeper of the ship's log. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Winky. After we leave the ambassadors on space station X-07, we'll go to Paratane to refuel. Then we'll pick them up later for the return flight to Earth. Sounds like a pretty dull trip. Mind if I bring along some books to read? 
It's a long way from the space station to Paratain. Plenty can happen. It probably will, too. That's why you need me along. <laughs> oh, Winky, double check the equipment. And don't overlook an extra supply of armament rockets. Right. They dare have an interplanet conference without me. Cleo Lanta, our powerful Sousa Rain is a planet officious. They could at least have had the courtesy to invite me. But Cleo Lanta. Speaking. Satellite 12, Garbutt speaking. Yes, Garbutt. I'm relaying a message from Duveen, our spy on the planet Earth. Yes, yes, what is it? Duveen reports Rocky Jones will fly Dr. Hillary Tyson and three other space ambassadors to the conference. Rocky Jones. On space station X07 in the Paratane group. Send Duveen code message 9-6. He's to carry out my instructions immediately. I'll stand by for Devine's report. Out. If I'm not mistaken, Space Station X07 is in neutral territory. Here. I don't intend to wait until they get into neutral territory. Code message 96 orders Devine to blow up the orbit jet with everybody on board. I've already figured the distance. Zena will have you know that she's the best navigator in the entire universe. Am I reasonably right, Zena? I'd say you were astronomically astute, Wiki. What can that idiot Duveen be doing? Not a word since I relayed my 9-6 code message. Maybe the message didn't get through to him. Garbart, satellite 12. Come in, Garbart, come in. Go ahead, please. Garbart, what about Duveen? No message yet? No, Cleo Land, I would have called immediately. Now, hold on a minute. Code message coming through. Decipher it as it comes through and read it to me quickly. Rocky Jones, scheduled to leave tomorrow at dawn. Do not worry. Ship will never blast off. We'll report when my mission is completed. Good news, Garbart. I'll be waiting patiently to hear that the orbit jet has been blown up. Yes, Cleolana. Rocky Joe, the late space ranger.
What is it, Rock? What's going on? This Joker was trying to sneak into the ship with this detonator. He could have blown up every rocket and us with it if the electronic detector hadn't been set up around the ship. And so he's the reason all the sirens went on. Well, who is he? Have a look. Get a real surprise. Wait, it's Juveen. One of our civilian employees. Jupiter, is this guy ever in a position to be loaded with information? Take Juveen to the Provo Marshal. I wonder who Duveen was working for and how much information he's already relayed to them. Well, we'll soon know. That's what I'm afraid of. Let's get back to Secretary Drake and report, huh? Sure. Pleasure to disintegrate the orbit jet in uh, mid space. Another time, perhaps. Atlas, then. I think I'll attend the Interplanet Peace Conference. Why, that's insane, Cleolanta. Don't you realize how dangerous it'd be for you to go there? Go? I'm not going anywhere. The Peace Conference diplomats are coming here. I'm only the pilot. Ask the navigator. Um, well, we're about, uh, um, we're, uh, we're well on our way. <laughs> Let's see now. We're going faster than escape velocity. We've left the Earth's atmosphere. We've been out, uh, 16 hours. So that would be... All the calculations, Bobby. Don't embarrass Venus. She might pile us into a meandering moon just to get even. XV-2 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. XV-2 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Come in, please. Space Affairs Headquarters, Drake speaking. Come in, XV-2. 
Reporting, sir. Orbit jet in top flying condition. Passengers and crew enjoying smooth and uneventful flight. Thanks for calling, Rocky. I don't mind telling you I feel relieved. You should be about a third of the way by now. Just about, sir. And Rocky, be careful. We will, sir. Out. Come in, Atlasan. Reporting for instructions, Theolana. Sit down. Who's going with you? Magni. Good. He knows when to be tough, but he has the strength of three men. What about the ship? Completely serviced, and a full complement of battle equipment. Excellent. Garbar just intercepted a conversation between Rocky Jones and Secretary Drake. Where's Rocky now? About one-third of the way, so we have plenty of time. Here's the plan. You're to proceed immediately to Space Station X-07, but stay outside of Radovec's scanning range. Is that clear? Mm-hmm. If I leave now, I should get there before Rocky does. Under no circumstances is he to know you're there. After he's landed his passengers, he'll take off for Paratain. And after he leaves, we'll give them our little surprise party. <laughs> How long do you think the conference will last, Rocky? Well, Dr. Tyson said about 72 hours. It gives us plenty of time to go to Paratain and back. In fact, we should have a whole day there with nothing to do but sleep. A day off and you want to sleep? Approaching Space Station X07, sir. Check. Tune in the visiograph, Winky. XB2 calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. The orbit jet to Space Station X07. Come in. Space Station X07. Andrews speaking. Come in, please. Andrews, this is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet. Approaching Space Station X07 with classified cargo. When we get within range of your magnetic couplers, notify us to turn off power so you can pull us in. Wilco, out. Out. Well, Winky, we're nearly there. Can't be too soon for me. Magni, I hope you realize how important this assignment is to our future. Operation Surprise, go ahead. Rocky Jones has contacted Space Station X07 and will land shortly. We've been keeping out of scanning range, awaiting your orders. Now listen carefully. I'll tell you as soon as the orbit jet leaves for Paratain. When I call back, you're to move in on the space station immediately. There won't be a second to lose. Well, I don't think we should let the orbit jet get away. I think we should destroy it once and for all. I'll do the thinking. You obey orders. Is that clear? Orders will be obeyed. Out. I can't thank you enough. We can all be thankful we arrived safely. And ahead of schedule, too. This means you and your crew will have more time to relax at Paratain. We'll see you here in three days, sir. And uh, good luck on the conference. Thank you. Don't forget to come back in 72 hours. Right. Goodbye, gentlemen. Bye, Roger. Bye, Roger. Bye. Bye.
take off to a new blast off. Oh, that's too easy, Bobby. That kind of take off as kids play. I meant for passengers, but for pilots like us. Give me a blast off any day. <laughs> XB2 calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. X07. Notify our destination of approximate arrival time. Yes, sir. Out. Winky, when we get the paratain, I think I'll catch up on my sleep. Not really. You haven't closed your eyes for so long, I'd begun to think you didn't have eyelids. I wouldn't have interrupted, sir, but you refused to talk with anyone else. This is Dr. Tyson speaking. Come in, please. Dr. Hillary Tyson? Yes? Dr. Tyson, we have a barrage of warhead missiles aimed at the space station. Who is this and what do you want? I will introduce myself when I arrive. Order your space station operator to guide us in for a safe landing at once. Or I will destroy the entire island. But I'll give you 30 seconds. If you do not cooperate, we'll release the barrage. What shall I say? Gentlemen, I'm afraid we have no choice. We have decided to cooperate. Oh, and Dr. Tyson, don't be foolish enough to contact anyone, as our communication band would pick it up. And you'd all be dead before you ever got an answer. What do you intend to do with us? Once we've landed, I'll let you know. Oh, and Dr. Tyson, after we've landed, part of our crew will remain in the ship with instructions to destroy anyone who does not cooperate. Order your operator to guide us in immediately. Out. Who does he say that, Bruce? Yes, Dr. Tyson. Unidentified ship. The magnetic coupler has picked you up. Then bring us in. Turn off your power. Power off. I'm pulling you in. on Paratane. I thought I told you to pack your lipstick. Lipstick is a temporary measure. Beauty parlors are permanent. Ooh, I hope there aren't any. Winky, you sound just like Rocky. Why not? Because you made a bad pun. Oh, you sound like yourself. Lena, have you checked to see if we're holding a true course? Paratane, straight ahead. Boy, oh boy. You know, the wonderful thing about Winky is he enjoys just thinking about the fun he's going to have, even if he never has it. You don't mean to tell me that you're planning some skullduggery-like work to spoil my vacation, do you? I was only kidding, Winky. Well, you better be. My vacation's fine to be as peaceful as... Well, as peaceful as the Interplanet Peace Conference. congratulate you on your wise decision to guide our spaceship safely in. Now you'll all sit down, and I'll brief you on your immediate future. Place your hands on the table in plain sight. We've no intention of doing anything foolish. You continue to be wise, Dr. Tyson. Who are you? And what do you want? Wise but very inquisitive. I'll do the talking. You sit. 
You'll regret this action when Rocky Jones finds out about this. Rocky Jones? <laughs> he should just about be landing at Paratine. Three hours away. Sit. Sit. Are we on course, Fina? Exactly. I just checked. She's right. I double checked. Well, we're really flying well equipped. It's not every spaceship that has two navigators. According to my calculations, we should be close enough to make contact and pick up Paratine on the visiograph. All right, let's try it. Ah, good old Paratine. There she is. XV-2 calling Space Ranger Legation on Paratane. Come in. Space Ranger Legation. Lieutenant Borden speaking. Hello, XV-2. Hello, Borden. This is Rocky Jones and crew of the Orbit Jet requesting landing instructions. You're approaching our ellipse now. As soon as you're in it, I'll... Good. Any messages for us? No, sir. Expecting something? No. Just wanted. Out. Out. Well, no news is good news, I guess. Oh, everything's fine, Rocky. You're just tired. A good rest and you'll quit worrying. Just the same. I'm calling Dr. Tyson as soon as we land. Now that I've explained myself, obey my orders and no one will be hurt. My men will escort you to our spaceship. Move! Operator. Set the magnetic controls for our takeoff, then proceed to the ship with the others. Pondu, better go along with him so he does it. Wait a minute. Could be Rocky Jones calling from Paratine. Don't answer it. I don't intend to answer, stupid. But I better be answered. Nothing was wrong. This is Andrews, Space Station X07. Come in. Andrews, Rocky. Just arrived on Paratane. How's everything going? Fine, Rocky. Just fine. Dr. Tyson's here. Oh, good. Let me talk to him. This is Dr. Tyson, Rocky. Everything going well, sir? Everything's going very well, Rocky. I hope I didn't interrupt anything. No, you didn't, Rocky. The orbit jet's being refueled, and if you need us, sir, we're at the Space Ranger Legation. I'm sure I won't need you, Rocky. So we'll see you as we planned in 24 hours. Out. Out. Well, Rocky, old Winky's gonna dive into Paratane's social swim. I'll see you when we leave to pick up Dr. Tyson in 24 hours. Have fun, Winky. Right. 24 hours? Hey, what'd he say? He said everything was fine. No, 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 that, that, that 24 hour stuff. He just said, I'll see you in 24 hours. Say, that's right, he did. We agreed on 72 hours. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I haven't had one honest to goodness vacation since I've been your co-pilot. Something always goes wrong. Winky, I think that was deliberate. Dr. Tyson isn't a man who forgets things. He must have had a reason for saying 24 hours. Well, I've got a good reason for wanting to make sure. Look, Dr. Tyson's a very busy man. He has lots of things on his mind. Why don't you call him back and find out? Maybe he got mixed up. You know, I can't figure this thing out. Well, then call him back, Rocky. It'd, it'd be nonsense for us to go tearing back there and find out he'd made a mistake. Here. Rocky Jones calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. Rocky Jones calling Space Station X07. Come in, Andrews. Rocky Jones calling Andrews. Come in, X07. What's well, no use, Rocky? The, the instruments are dead. Maybe. Or something's happened. Rocky Jones calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Secretary Drake, come in. Urgent. Secretary.
Secretary Drake speaking. Come in, Rocky. I'm calling from Paratane, sir. We just landed here for refueling. Then you left Dr. Tyson and the ambassadors safely at the space station. Well, that's what I'm calling about, sir. Rocky, what happened? Well, I've just tried to contact the space station and got no answer. Will you try it, sir? Maybe with the additional power you have there, you can get through. Right. Call you back. Out. Secretary Drake, Space Affairs Headquarters, calling Space Station X07. Come in, Andrews. Secretary Drake, Space Affairs Headquarters, calling Space Station X07. Come in, Andrews. Urgent. Secretary Drake, Space Affairs Headquarters, calling Space Station X07. Come in, Andrews. Urgent. Secretary Drake calling Paratane. Come in, Rocky Jones. Yes, sir. Blast off immediately for X07. Augment your crew with three men from the Space Rangers Legation at Paratane. Be prepared for possible combat. Yes, sir. The ship's already refueled. We'll blast off as soon as we pick up the extra men. Out. The Nalcavardi Governor. Atlas Dan calling you, Nalcavardi Governor. Come in. Atlas Dan calling you, Nalcavardi Governor. Come in. This is Cleo Lanta. Do you have good news for me, Atlas Dan? Operation Surprise, success. Atlas Dan, when you arrive in Ophesis, report to me immediately. I am giving you a very handsome reward. Well, thank you, Cleo Lanta. Out. Magnique, if I know the kind of reward our suzerain has in mind, you're looking at the future governor of Satellite 18. We're approaching the space station, Rocky. Turn on visiograph, Winky. Yes, sir. Yes, well, there it is. I wonder what'll happen when we get there. They must be able to see us by now, too. Maybe. Well, they're bound to have picked us up on radar, Vex. Suppose the station's been taken over and they suddenly start blasting us. That's the chance we'll have to take. When we get within firing range, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, they better not try anything. That space station's a sitting duck for our missiles. XV-2 calling space station X-07. Put Dr. Tyson on at once. Answer. No answer. Maybe it's a trap, Rocky. I know something terrible has happened to Dr. Tyson. Trina, Clave, go back to quarters. When we land, if we land, stay on board with the three space rangers till we know what's what. Tell them to be armed and stay on the alert. That's an order. Yes, sir. Hurry, Bobby. Winky, we're going in for a landing. Can we make it, Rocky? Without the space station guiding us? We've got to. We'll use our tractor beam to guide us in. We can balance the ship against the magnetism of the space station. And let's go. Increase tractor beam. Roger. Tractor beam up. just have disappeared into thin air. I think we both know what's happened, sir. And who's responsible for it? Yes. And this time she's gone too far. Then you agree it's clear, aren't it? Nobody else could invent such a bold, fiendish plot. But, but why, sir? What does she want with the ambassadors? 
It's her idea of revenge, because we have her two top men, Darganto and Griff, in jail, awaiting their trials. Darganto was her first in command, and Griff was the best spy she ever had on Earth. Yes, I remember she told us in no uncertain terms she'd get even if we proceeded with the trial. Any suggestions as to how we counteract Cleolanta's vicious maneuver? Yes. Well, why don't you see what you can find out from Darganto and Griff, sir? Maybe they'll drop a clue of some kind. Good idea, Rocky. I'll get right back to you. Out. I shall bring Darganto and Griff here immediately. Yes, sir. Calling the landing base. Tell Aunt Lisanne to bring my guest to me immediately. Yes, clear, Lander. I warn you, Darganto, and you, Griff, if you continue this silence, you'll receive absolutely no recommendations for mercy at your trial. You mean you promise us immunity if we talk? I mean I'd do everything in my power to mitigate your sentences. Very well. What do you want to know? Have you any information as to why Cleolanta would abduct the space ambassadors and hold them on officious? No. But thanks for the news. Get these men out of here. Put them in isolation and don't let anybody near them. Secretary Drake, never underestimate the power of our lovely suzerain Cleolanta. I knew she'd eventually get even with you for arresting us. Take them away. All right. Out. Space Affairs Headquarters calling XO7. Come in, Rocky. Rocky, sir. Go ahead. Gargano and Griff claim they know nothing. I see. I think I should go to Ephesus and find out if Cleolanta is really behind all this. There's really nothing else for you to do, Rocky. Then we'll blast out immediately, sir. Leave Bobby and Dina there, so we can relay messages to the space station. Right, sir. Out. Calling space station, X07. Calling space station, X07. Come in. Space station, X07. Rocky Jones speaking. Come in. Rocky Jones. How nice to hear your voice. This is Cleolanta. All right, Cleolanta. Let's have it. I'll come straight to the point, Rocky Jones. I'm holding your space ambassadors as my prisoners. Now listen carefully if you want to see them again. Here are my terms. You will deliver Dargado and Griff to me here at Ophetius, safely and immediately. When this is done, I will give in exchange my distinguished prisoners. Is this clear, Rocky Jones? Oh, yes, Cleola. Just as clear as it is treacherous. I consider it treacherous that Earth is holding two of my men to stand trial. Darganto and Griff committed crimes against the United Worlds. According to your laws, they committed crimes. According to my laws, they followed orders. I've stated my terms. If you refuse to accept them, I shall dispose of your ambassadors in exactly the same manner you dispose of Darganto and Griff. I'll expect your decision in one hour. Out. Well, you, you got a hand it to that Cleolanta. She's sure the queen of the underhand. What do we do now, Rocky? Oh. Space Station X07 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Secretary Drake, come in. Urgent. At least they're alive. It could be worse. Secretary Drake speaking. Come in. Rocky, sir. I've just been contacted by Cleolanta. Take the message on the scramble, please. Rocky, we don't need an hour to decide. I don't need a scramble to send a message. I don't care who hears this. 
Tell Cleolanta we'll carry out her treacherous exchange of prisoners, but we'll do it our way. We'll honor the exchange, Cleolanta. But first, I must be assured Dr. Tyson is there and safe. May I speak with him? Yes, Rocky, this is Dr. Tyson. Now, it's good to hear your voice, sir. Are you all right? Well, outside of the fact that I'd rather be with you, I'm fine. That's the only good news we've had today. Now, let me talk to Cleolanta, please. Yes, Rocky. You've decided to accept my terms. Not quite. There will be no exceptions. There will be no exceptions as far as the prisoners are concerned. I'm stating this officially as relayed to me by Secretary Drake. The exchange will take place here, on the space station in neutral territory. I refuse this compromise. It's to be done my way or not at all. All right. Then prepare for action from the United Worlds. But that amounts to a declaration of war. I thought the United Worlds was interested only in peace. The United Worlds have been patient with you long enough. You'll agree to this compromise or suffer the consequences. Is that clear? The exchange of prisoners will take place on Space Station X-07. All right. Now, I'm to be in charge of the exchange. Very well. Darganto and Griff will be flown from Earth immediately. They should arrive here in 36 hours. You ought to have your prisoners here at that time. In 36 hours. Everyone is to be unarmed during the exchange. Is that clear? How do I know you'll abide by these ridiculous conditions? We'll abide by them. If you double-cross me, Rocky Jones, you'll never return to Earth alive. I give you my word of honor. Can you do the same? Out. You sure let her have it, Rocky. I was real proud of you. Space Station X-07 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Drake here. Come in, Rocky. Cleo Lada just accepted the terms. Without exception, sir. I'll send a spaceship with Darganto and Griff. They'll be on their way in an hour. Very good, sir. Job well done, Rocky. Thank you, sir. Out. Marshal, prepare spaceship XC-10 to escort Darganto and Griff. Yes, sir. <laughs> Secretary Drake, thanks for your hospitality on Earth. Get them aboard. off at 0700 with the ambassadors. Rocky Jones demands an exchange of prisoners. Very well, we'll exchange prisoners. Rocky Jones demands no armament. Very well, we'll have no visible armament. Come closer. Dargano, you and Griff wait in here. Monkey, you stay here with them, in case they want anything. I'm going back to the control room and guiding the Ephesian spaceship. It's been almost 36 hours. They should be here any minute, if they come. They'll be here. I'm the most important officer Cleolanthus ever had. She went to a lot of trouble to get me back and showed you up for the fools you really are. Winky, I could handle that mosquito with one hand. Rocky, tell him to shut up or I'll paste him one. Rocky? We've sighted a spaceship on the visiograph. Watch them, Winky. And uh, no more arguments. Oh, this is a great day, Magni. Why? 
Bringing Dargado back to Cleolanta? That means you'll move back into second in command. That's exactly what Dargano's expecting, too. When I finish with this operation, Cleolanta will be so pleased that she'll hand me another reward. You know something you're not telling me. Come in. XO7 to the Nautilus. Our magnetic coupler is guiding you. When you come in, proceed with your prisoners to the conference room. Immediately. Out. Garganto and Griff. Over here. I'll take over Mir Athasan. You return to the ship. You'll feel a little better after some rest. And I'll see that you get it. Starek, take Garganto and Griff to the ship. I prefer to stay here. Stay if you like, but don't interfere. And now in fair exchange, we return our prisoners. Gentlemen, welcome home. Oh. So are the see you. Prisoners exchange is agreed, right? Yes. And convey my congratulations to Cleolanta for keeping her word. Go. Atlas, what do you think you're doing? We're taking Dr. Tyson back to a patient to stay. Well, I should have known Cleolanta couldn't keep an honorable agreement. The agreement was everyone was to be unarmed during the exchange. During the exchange, we were unarmed. Atlas, then I warn you. What you're doing is grounds for armed intervention by the United Worlds. That's Cleolanta's business. I'm just following orders. Starek? Yes, sir. Take Andrews, the operator, to the control room. Andrews, get over here. Set the magnetic controls for our takeoff. And Starek, after he finishes, tie him up. Big gun, little brain. Manny! Don't stop him, Athelstan. They all deserve a beating for what they did to me. Gargantu, for the last time, will you keep out of this? You're afraid, Athelstan. Afraid of what Rocky Jones might do to you if Magni hits his little friend. Leonardo's orders were that no one was to be harmed. I assume she included you in that order, too. Dargato, you're free to go to the spaceship anytime you like. I think you should realize that taking me to Ephesus doesn't mean that I'll cooperate when I get there. You're wasting our time, Dr. Tyson. Remember this, Atlas, then. I refuse to accept this fate, which I consider worse than death. Dr. Tyson, you... you look ill. There's nothing to worry about, Rocky. I promise you that. The magnetic controls are set, sir, and Andrews is secure. We can take off any time you're ready, sir. I'm attaching a time lock to this door. Three hours after we leave, the lock will automatically open, and you'll be free to do anything you please. By then, Dr. Tice will be in Cleolanta's hands. Any questions? Yeah, just one. Tell me, what's the next to the lowest form of animal life? Stand back. Stand back! That lock set for three hours? Yes, sir. Hurry up. Hondu, help him. Magni, you can't carry Dr. Tyson. said no one was to be harmed, didn't she? Yes, that's what Atlasan said. If something were to happen to Rocky and his friends, she'd blame Atlasan, wouldn't she? Yes. What do you mean? Griff, stand guard. What 
did you do? Turned off the oxygen. You're with me in this, aren't you, Griff? All right. I'll clear up with that and turn it off. It's all your fault. You made a blunder of the whole thing. My fault? I didn't come near him. The old aunt will never believe that. Especially when I tell her what happened. Come on, let's get back to Ophetius. Come on, do hysterics. Take the body of the ship. Are you out of your mind? If I don't take the body back, the will never believe I captured him. Tyson's no good to her now. I'm taking over, Atlasan. You've done enough damage. Get on the ship. I'm still in charge here, and I say Tyson's body goes with us. All right, take the body of the ship. That's an order, do you hear? Leave him here. Go to the ship, both of you. Don't you move or I'll shoot. That's for you. Drop that gun. Have you thrown in prison for this? You'll be lucky to be alive when I tell Cleolanda how you blundered. Get on the ship. Go on. Gargano, don't you think you'd better turn the oxygen back on now? No. I want my case against Atlas Sand to be airtight. you've had to suffer this inconvenience, but since there's nothing at all we can do for three hours, we may as well relax. If I know you, Rocky, the word relax means nothing to you at a time like this. Maybe not, but to you it's an order. Starboard rockets. Gentlemen, 
they've, they've cut off our oxygen supply. I'm going to have a look at that vent. Boys, move that back, will you? Uh, there's nothing circulating through here. Vina, got a fingernail file? No, Rocky, I left it on the ship. Wait a minute, my lipstick. Use the edge, it'll work just like a screwdriver. No good tool kit should be without a lipstick. So ortho. I'm sure glad we've got an army engineer on. As soon as I get this off, maybe you'll take a look inside and tell me what you think. Sure thing. Standard circulator. Well, what kind is that? It's a small tunnel, 18 inches square. Exactly the size of this vent opening. It runs continuously from here to the air generator and the moisture recovery section, which is probably two or three corridors away from here. If we could only get to it. Well, certainly no man can get through that tunnel. No man. Someone smaller than a man could. Yeah, 18 inches. Why, well, I'll even have room to wiggle. Bobby, are you sure you feel well enough to go in there? I'm okay, Rocky. All right, but keep calling to us as you go along. I think we'll be able to hear you. Come on, let's blast off. I'll give you a hand. Time's short, Bobby. But remember, don't get excited or try to hurry. You'll have to save your energy. Okay, Rocky, I'm on my way. Good luck, Space Ranger. Ah, this is more like it, Griff. All those weeks in that prison cell on Earth. I knew Cleo Land would get us out some way. I guess she thinks we're pretty important, huh? Atlas Sand will find out just how important. You've got a web spun around him he'll never get out of. <laughs> Save your breath, Bobby. Rocky! Rocky! Yes, Bobby? I've come to the end. Good work, Bobby. Can you tell what it is? It's a small pipe with holes in them. Holes? Bobby, can you see through them? No, I put my finger in one. Rocky, he's there. Those pipes bring the oxygen from the tanks directly into the circulation tunnel. Bobby, you're there. Push it open. Rocky, I can't. Bobby, please push. Push hard. Oh, it's no use, Rocky. I can't do it. If he could just make one good push, I know he'd get through. You're right, Rocky. Those small tunnel doors were not riveted on. They were made so they could be easily removed for repairing. Bobby, listen to me. Now that you've rested, try it again, will you? It's no use, Rocky. It's gold in the rock. I can't break it. Come on, 
Bobby. Think of something. Use your head. Use my head. Use my head. I use my head. <laughs> nice going, Bobby. We're proud of you, Bobby. Now, turn on the master switch. Generator, condenser. Master switch. Rocky, can you hear that? Ah, uh, sure can, Bobby. Now, do you think you can find your way back here and pick the lock on this door? I'll be right there. How did you open the door? By magic? Oh, this door is a cinch. But that other thing, it's good I'm hard-headed. <laughs> Bobby, we're very, very proud of you. You saved our lives, you know. Tell me, did the pipes push away from the tunnel opening? Yeah. You should have seen what my head had a push. That means we're not getting any circulation here. We better move to the control room. Andrews, he's still tied up. Let's go. Tyson is dead. Oh, no. This is all Claire Lana's fault. If she hadn't tried to take him to Ephesus, this never would have happened. Winky, you and these men take Dr. Tyson's body to the ship. Yes, sir. We'll go to the control room and call Secretary Drake. How did you get out? I expected to be tied up for another three hours. Bobby crawled through the air tunnel. Is the astrophone working? I'll have to repair it. It won't take long. Hey. Wait a minute. He moved. Well, he did. I saw his eyes. They blinked. Winky, what's wrong? Well, it's, it's Dr. Tyson. He... He... Come on. Blink his eyes. His heart's beating. Look, Doctor Tyson, are you all right, Rocky? Let's get him to the control room. Yeah. 
Easy. Come on. I just can't believe this. You can't believe it. I thought I'd blacked out into useful consciousness. I'm sorry that I had to do this to you, but I didn't have a chance to tell anyone. Tell us what, sir? Well, it's really very simple. I took a suspended animation capsule. A what? A capsule that suspends animation temporarily stops all vital functions like the heart and the pulse. It's like drowning, Winky. Oh? My laboratory's been working with it for some time, but frankly, I, I didn't expect to test its effectiveness on myself. I'd like to see Cleo Lantis' face when she finds out you've tricked her. I'd like to tell that young woman what I think of her tactics. The first person we better tell is Secretary Drake. Yes. Is the astrophone working yet, Andrews? Try it out. Rocky Jones calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Come in. Space Station X-07 calling. Come in, Space Affairs Headquarters. Marshal speaking. Come in, Rocky. I have a very urgent report, Marshal. Take it on the scrambler, will you please? Rocky, this is unbelievable. All I can say is we're relieved to hear from all of you. I'll report this to Secretary Drake right away. Hurry home, Rocky. Right, Marshal. Out. Gargano says one thing. Atlas Fan, you say another. But you're wasting your time trying to place the blame for Dr. Tyson's death. I'm holding you both responsible for what's happened. Cleolanda. You were valuable to me only because you carried out my orders unscrupulously. But when you start trying to trick me, you're no longer of any use. And you've made me the target of the United Worlds. For this, you shall pay very dearly. Yes? Oh, Cosmos, come in. I've accomplished the impossible. Earth Scrambler code, I've broken it. Good work, Cosmos. That's the only good news I've had today. And I've decoded our first intercepted message to Earth. Let me see. That's from Rocky Jones. Why, it can't be. Why not? Why, it hasn't been three hours since they were locked in. I have no torture at my command that's worthy of you two. Dr. Tyson is alive. Alive, do you hear? Who turned off the oxygen? He did. What oxygen? Don't pretend, Atlas and I saw you do it, and so did Griff. You stay out of this. That was a very foolish thing for you to do. You're right. He framed this whole thing. Why did you think I made the blunder? Gentlemen! Since you're so anxious to get at each other's throat, I'll give you an opportunity to fight it out unmolested. Guard! Take these officers and lock them up in a cell together. I'm sure after a couple of months in the same cell, you'll both see eye to eye.
top of your head still have a bump, Bobby? Like a goose egg. That ventilation shaft must have hurt. Steady she goes, Bobby. Rocky, are we close enough to Earth to talk with space headquarters there? Yes, Dr. Tyson. XB2 calling space headquarters. Come in. Space headquarters answering. Come in, XB2. Marshal here. It's Marshal. Secretary Drake's adjutant. Marshal, this is Dr. Tyson. Give my regards to Secretary Drake and tell him I'd like to talk with him when we get back about awarding special citations to the crew of the Orbit Jet. And that includes Bobby. I'll relay your message to Secretary Drake. Thank you, sir. Out. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.